All right, welcome everybody. Happy, happy, happy. Ooh, that was very loud, wasn't it? I'm gonna turn that down a bit. All right, uh, hopefully that's not overbearing on the voice, but welcome everyone and welcome to my photography masterclass. Today we're going to be doing a live shoot. As you can tell, I'm in studio. We're going to be doing a product shot or kind of like a themed shoot for Adobe, um, Adobe stock. And I'm going to walk you through the process of how you can uh, go from shots you take with your regular camera, your DSLR, your mirrorless, even your iPhone, and upload them for sale on Adobe stock. So with that said, I <coughs> just want to remind people that the chat takes place at b.net slash Adobe Live. So if you're watching this on Twitter, you're watching this on YouTube, you're watching this on Facebook, wherever you're watching it from, that's cool. But um, I'm going to <coughs> only be able to pay attention, especially in a live shoot, to one chat window at a time. So that chat window is the b.net. I think that's this way. Yeah, the b.net slash Adobe Live. <coughs> and uh, here, let me take a drink of water, a little dry mouth here. There we go. <coughs> and um, that's the chat I'll be looking at. So I see a bunch of people in the chat already. I see Michael, Steve, Rebecca, um, Joan, Andreas, William, Mike, Victoria, of course, General Kenobi, and uh, Dwight and several others. So thank you for being here on Masterclass Friday. So for, for those of you who are unaware of what Masterclass Friday is, it's the Adobe Live Day that's dedicated to the Adobe Evangelist streaming about their craft. So <coughs> you have Paul Tranny earlier this morning, I think streaming about <coughs> graphic design. You had myself streaming about photography right now. Then I think um, Paul's up again streaming about Photoshop, and then Jason, uh, I think we do a, a, a daily creative challenge in there too. And I think uh, Jason's in, in up next after that to talk about um, audio and video, of course, and Howard's talking about UX UI design in Adobe XD, and then Kyle talking about um, uh, digital painting and drawing. So full day of master classes if you just want to hang out with us today. All right, so with that said, let me kill the banner. And um, again, let me walk you through what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to give you a studio shot, <coughs> kind of walk you through what's set up. Here, let me, hold on. I'm going to try and get my voice together. So I'm going to put you guys on mute for a second. All right, hopefully that's better. All right, so today I've got um, a shot set up here. I'm using the new Archon clamp mount for mirrorless and DSLRs, uh, or phones or tablets for that matter. So I'm actually gonna do the first set of shots shooting straight down. And then um, we'll put it on a regular tripod and shoot um, straight on. I've got two strobes right now. I've got the Westcott FJ400s and both Okta SoftBanks, the bigger one in the back for like high key, and the main light, um, like a smaller, I think 35 or 38 inch um, Okta for the main light. I have various toys and, and vaccine material, because we're gonna do a vaccine type shoot. So order props from Amazon to get this all situated. And just because when you're shooting for Adobe Stock, you want to shoot things that are relevant. You want to see, you want to shoot things that people need for their articles they're writing, for their TV broadcast, for their podcast, if they're doing video podcasts. Um, if they're uh, writing journals, if they're writing newspaper, they often go to Adobe Stock to get the um, images they need 
to support their articles. So what you have to think about, and, and again, shooting shots for vaccination is kind of, you're too late <laughs> almost, because there's probably thousands of shots now, uh, photographs on Adobe Stock related to vaccination because it's been a topic for the last several months. But at the same time, don't give up just because there's a ton of it already because Adobe Stock also favors newer images in the searches. So instead of selling people the same image that's been there for six months, even if it's popular, they've changed the algorithm to, to um, favor images that are new and popular. So don't take, uh, don't take it as, oh, I can't, I, I can't do this because that topic has been used to death. Now, if you're, if you're photographing puppies and dogs and kittens, that's probably been done to death, and it's, unless you've got something super cute and super, um, super like just over the top. Yeah, that one, your, your image will probably get buried in the search. But anyway, uh, so someone said, uh, what is a basic setup? I can't afford all this gear. Well, it, it, it doesn't have to be all this gear. It could be literally your iPhone with good light. So there's a window right there. If I put a nice sheer curtain, I've got a, a scrim in front of it, and I put the same table in front of that window and shoot with my iPhone in RAW, that's a basic setup. So you just take it up from there. Um, maybe it's just a, a less than $100 speed light on a $100 uh, softbox or shooting the speed light through sheer material like a shower curtain. So you can go as cheap as you want, and you don't have to spend a ton of money to do this. One of my best-selling uh, iPhone shots was uh, driving through a drive through and there it was rain, and there was rain on the sunroof, and I just pointed my phone up and hit click, and I, so, I sell the water drops regularly. I haven't sold them in a while, but I, when, it, when I first put that image on Adobe Stock, those water drop images were selling quite a bit. So don't think of it as, Terry's got a ton of gear, I'll never be able to do that because I can't afford it. It's, it can be super basic. It can be just your phone if you've got a, a newer phone. Um, and again, it could be whatever light source that you have that's a good light source. So it's all about light and quality as opposed to a, a super, super duper, um, a super duper setup. Okay, so with that said, um, so Tim's telling me the, the audio is in the left channel only. Let me take a look at that. All right, uh, I'm not sure what I can do about it at this point. So if it's in the left channel only, you're gonna have to deal with the left channel only, <laughs> sorry. All right, so with that said, um, let's go ahead and do a shot. So I've got the mirrorless camera tethered and it just went to sleep. All my lights went to sleep, by the way. There we go. Tethered into Lightroom. So let's go ahead and get that all set up. So I'll switch over to the uh, desktop. Here we are. And I've been doing some test shots. So let's, let's take it from scratch. All right, I'm gonna get out of tethering. I'm gonna show you how to do it from scratch. All right, so I'm gonna go up to my file menu in Lightroom Classic. This is a Lightroom Classic only feature. So if you're using Lightroom, the regular cloud version, you don't have tethering. It's only in Lightroom Classic. All right, so with that, let's go to um, tethered. Tethered camera, start tethered, or st tethered, yeah, tethered capture, start tethered capture. Okay, and I'm going to rename this um, vaccine shoot for Adobe stock. And I'm going to start the count at one. And I'm going to not give it these keywords. I'm just not going to give it any keywords at all. And... I think I'm good to go after that. Okay, so now I'll click OK. And because my camera's already connected, it's trying to find the camera.
but I've got it already connected and it just found it. So I'm using my Z6 II. And you can also see the camera settings there. You can see that it's on. Um, <laughs> you can see that it's on um, ISO 100, uh, 125th of a second, F56, auto white balance. And I could tap the shutter release here, but I also have a wireless remote um, that I can just walk around with. So, like that. <laughs> and then that will take a shot and bring that shot in. Now, let's do another one because that, fr that front strobe didn't fire. And there we go. Okay, so now we can go full screen on those. And even though the camera shows it in the right position, like the camera showing it horizontal, for whatever reason, Lightroom's bringing these in in, um, <laughs> in uh, uh, vertical format. I can always rotate them. It's no big deal. But uh, right now, I'm just checking the quality, checking the, um, the um, layout, and making sure it's what I want. And there's some things I need to change. So first and foremost, let's move the vial, this vial over. Let's take the cap off the needle and put it center. Let's move the teddy bear down a little bit. Actually, no, I like it where it was, right about there. And let's move these band-aids over. And we can lay this vial down because we are shooting overhead. And there we go. Okay, so there's nothing specific about COVID here. This is just really about vaccinations and using the teddy bear. It makes it, you know, an image for children to get vaccinated. So just think about it that way. All right, we'll take a shot with the new setup. And the pink band-aids need to move over a little to the right and down. And this is why we tether so we can see exactly what we're getting. There we go. Now, the other great thing about shooting inanimate objects, I'll call them for stock, whether it's still life or just inanimate objects like I'm shooting now, you don't need a ton of shots. Like, if you got it in focus and you, and you got it, um, you got the shot, like, move on. Because if I take 10 of those, I'm only going to submit one of them to Adobe Stock. So take a couple, make sure you got it right, and then rearrange things because you don't need 50 of the same thing to submit to Adobe Stock. You're only going to submit one of them anyway unless you, um, unless you um, change it up a little bit. So, like, for example, someone said something about the bear's foot. So let's adjust the bear's foot. And there's a label there. Let's move that label in the back. And let's move the bear up just a hair so it's not at the edge of the frame. All right. Probably move it up a little more. Yeah, there we go. So that way it's not touching the frame. You got plenty of room around it. And people can add whatever they need in terms of text. Now, like I said, take a couple of those. You got it. Then move on. So maybe I don't need both sets of Band-Aids. Maybe I only need one Band-Aid. And it's OK that you're leaving quite a bit of white space on the right-hand side because um, people that buy stock love to have copy space. They love to have space already in the image to put their text. So that works out great. I might do this. I don't know if that's going to be at the bottom of the frame. Let's see. Yep. But let's move it up at the top. Move the teddy bear over a little bit. Put it at the top. Maybe turn the vial upside down. All right. Yeah, something like that. Maybe now it's time to take the Band-Aids out or move them over. Something like that. Yep. 
and the band-aids are not over far enough or down far enough and maybe it's time to switch up the color because again how many of the same shots do you need all right I think we got it like I think you know you can just keep playing with variations of this particular shot but I think you got the idea just you know dollar store go find props dirt cheap Amazon has props dirt cheap and shoot them one of the most popular props you can shoot believe it or not is the piggy bank people <laughs> buy piggy bank images all day long because they use them in stories about the economy. They use them in stories about financial management. They use them in stories about money. Money. They use them in stories about everything. So just keep in mind that uh, spending a couple bucks on a good prop can sell that image over and over and over again. Certainly making the money back that you spent on the prop and then some. That's the whole point. Now, don't buy a prop that's weird, no one knows what it is, because chances are if it's weird, no one knows what it is, they're probably not gonna buy it, and therefore, <laughs> you've wasted your money on a prop. Okay, next up. Let's get this teddy bear out of the way. And we're gonna stand this, actually we're gonna lay that vial over. Put that needle there. I've got my COVID vaccine shot. And now we're going to move the camera. So the camera's mounted on this arm by Archon Mounts, shooting straight down. But straight down in this case doesn't really tell the story. So I'm going to take a second to, um, to take this off the mount and put it on the regular tripod. So um, Aaron from Archon, if you're watching this, my only critique would be I would love to be able to put my ball head on here to have a quick release as opposed to having to screw in a quarter 20. A quarter 20 is great, <laughs> but I can get, so get it off, on and off so much faster if it had my um, ball head. Okay, so now I'm on a front-facing tripod. I'm going to scroll, I'm going to tilt it down a bit. And trust me, it'll be worth the wait. All right, I think we're ready to go. Let's take this shot. That one comes in horizontal little too bright so I can either turn the power down on the strobe or let's look at the camera settings right now I'm shooting at at f5.6 but really there's no reason for a shallow depth of field because there's just a light behind it so I can crank up my f-stop and that will automatically need more light <laughs> and therefore make it look um, here you need to be able to see it and therefore make it darker all right I like everything except for the needle or syringe I should call it the real name let's try that that's better much better All right, so now it's just a matter of positioning again. C trying to create some symmetry between the empty bottle and the syringe. I'm just looking at the chat, make sure I'm not missing anything.
I don't know it works or not, but sure HDMI can't be displayed in Lightroom Classic. It's, it can't be. <laughs> um, my HDMI is actually going out to my streaming computer. So that's how you're able to see my camera settings when I do that. Or that. Okay. Um, again, no reason to shoot that to death. We got it. You only need one of those. You don't need 10 of them. So now we add something else. This teddy bear is sitting up already. Let's see if we can get that one in. All right. I just need to position the camera up a little higher. And maybe I will reduce the f-stop this time since we got the darker teddy bear. So for the camera setting people, that's what we're on now. That one was because it was dark because the strobe didn't fire. That time it fired. And neither strobe fired that time. Okay, we're good. Eh, I'm not liking the... Um, the way it's just sitting right in his lap. So let's, let's make some changes here. First and foremost, there's a label. Labels, 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 always getting in the way. And, and here's, the, here's my best piece of advice, period, no matter what you're photographing. If you see something, don't say the words, yeah, I see that, I'll take it out in Photoshop later. Because you can just take a second and get rid of it now. And that way you won't have to worry about it later. You won't have to spend your time doing something that was just as easy to just, you know, move it down or get it out of the way, as opposed to having to painstakingly clone it out of every shot. So just keep that in mind. Maybe something like that. I can't tell if I'm going to see the label, but let's see. Yeah, no label. And let's go to just the desktop. And my empty COVID bottle is there. Let's move it over a little. There we go. And maybe now we got, you know, take one more just for safety. Now that we got that one, now maybe we move that one over here. There we go. And again, how many of those do you need? You know, you can keep playing around with the position of things. You can add more to it. You can do more. But at a certain point, you know, you're just shooting different variations of the same thing. Like one more thing I would probably do though, just turn that bottle around. Yeah, that looks better. Uh, yeah, Lindsay, don't say I'll fix it in post. <laughs> It, it's just not worth the effort. I, I, I painstakingly had to fix things on 10 different photos because I could have just as easily walked over and taken it out of the shot as opposed to um, saying, seeing it and saying I'll fix it later. Now, if you didn't see it, that's one thing. But if you see it, don't say you'll fix it later. You're just asking yourself for more, <laughs> saving teddy bear lives, you just ask yourself for more trouble. And for some reason, oh, I was going to say, for some reason, my trigger was locked. Okay, again, now how many of those do I need? I got them. And so now, we can get rid of the teddy bear. We can bring the piggy in.
a little bright. So we'll bump up the f-stop. Let's take it one stop up to f6.3. Yeah, that's better. The mask is more prevalent now. Okay. And again, how many different things do you want to do with the with the uh, the piggy? So you might get your own arm involved. So here we'll inject the piggy. There we go. I see most COVID vaccine shots held like this. Not sure why. All right. So you too can be a hand model. All right. Okay, what else do we need? Now I have, um, have this one with the cap on it. So I can stick the needle in it. <laughs> Problem is I need both hands, so I may have to do a time shot. <laughs> Let's do that. Okay, pressing the shutter. I got 10 seconds. I see it flashing. It probably won't look great, but let's see. Yeah, it's too high. Okay, let's try that again. 10 seconds. Eh, it's okay. I'd probably be positioned better on the side of it. Let's try that. And again, just okay. So, um, like I might get out of the, like I would might, in this case, like get behind the table, in between the strobe, hold it up like this to get a better shot. But for the sake of what we're doing now, um, <laughs> I'll just let it go. And you might also, while you've got the syringe in the bottle, might as well get that too and take it off the timer. Otherwise, we'll be waiting 10 seconds for everything. All right. Yeah, there we go. So, for the, again, for the people that say I don't have all that gear, we're talking maybe 20 bucks in props. And you can just as easily shoot this with an iPhone. All right, I'm just keeping track of time. We've got 25 minutes left. And I definitely want to get through all the post and uploading stuff, so I just want to make sure um, there's one more thing I'll do. Let's get the piggy out of the way. And true story, when I ordered these vials, I thought I was only ordering like two or three. It came with a case of like 50. <laughs> so I've got literally 50 uh, of these empty vials with no caps that, again, for the money, was worth it, Amazon, but hopefully they sell <laughs> so I can get my money back because I have zero use for these after I do the shoots. And by the way, the, the vial that has the blue water in it, that is literally just blue water with a, um, uh, 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 just literally water with a, blue, a drop of blue food coloring. 
and the COVID-19 is just a label I printed on COVID-19 vaccine is just a label I printed from my printer. So two seconds in a word processor, printed it out on a label, cut it out, stuck it on, and away we go. I was going to say, what happened to the piggy bank? Forgot I took it out. <laughs> All right, those are too bright. Going back up to F8 for my camera setting people. Oh, no. There we go. That's better. I like the contrast of the blue water with the empty vials next to it. Can you readjust it if it looks blown out, if it's raw? Yes. Uh, you can certainly bring down the highlights and bring down the whites. But again, just like fixing that thing that you're saying, can I do it in post? If you see it and it looks blown out to you in the camera, then fix it now. So you don't have to worry about doing it in post. What does Adobe Stock pay? Um, it's all on contributor.adobe, or contrib here, let me put it in the URL. So for people who are asking questions about Adobe Stock and what it pays, rather than me misquote things, I'll give you the URL. And you don't have to be a, you don't even have to be a um, Creative Cloud member to contribute to stock. Uh, split the difference. So for people that might be watching this on another platform, it's contributor.stock.adobe.com. Go to that URL, get set up, takes only a few minutes, and you can be uploading images today. All right, I think I got enough of that. And like I said, we only got like 20 minutes left, so let's go through the rest of the process because again, I can spend all day just shooting. I think we have plenty of shots. We're only gonna upload one like from each series anyway, one or two at, the, at most, and uh, one or two looks. So let's go ahead and jump into uh, what this process looks like. All right, let me get a desktop. Let me just fix one thing here. Make it a little easier to see. I'll make myself smaller. There we go. And we'll get out of full screen. And here are all of our images that we shot today in the folder that um, They're in the folder that we set up during the tethered shooting. So now what I'm going to do is hit the little X on the tether bar to turn off tethering. And then I can scroll through my images. And I can say, right, you know, I can just like quickly say right off the bat, rather than trying to fix the exposure on that one, I already... Uh, uh, yep, I'm working with a beta, so it's telling me that that feature just crashed. That's okay. Um, so I can just go through quickly, find images that I know I'm not going to use, and reject those right away. Like images where the strobe didn't fire, or images where the exposure was way off, 
and I shot another one that the exposure was right on, there's no reason to keep those. So we'll just uh, mark those with an X. So I hit the X on the keyboard. Now we'll command delete, PC control delete, to delete those from disk. I don't need them, not, never gonna use them, no reason to keep them. All right, next up, I'm going to select all the ones that were rotated or need to be rotated. And on your, um, on your toolbar, you've got to rotate if you add it. So I just add it, rotate to the toolbar at the bottom. And then I can just go in and hit rotate to the left. Now they're all rotated. All right, great. And again, we don't need all of these. So let's go through them and mark our picks for the ones we are likely to submit. And chances are the picks are further along. Like that's not a pick. I'm just going to mark it as a reject because the syringe is off center. That's a good one. But again, we were making adjustments. We we're moving the bear around. We we're moving. Well, see what we're doing here. And okay, so that last one where the bear was in position, the band-aids were in position. I'm going to mark that a P for pick because that was the last one of that series that we got right. All right. So again, same thing. All right, that was the last one of that one that was right, so we marked that one. Then we did this, so that one. That was the last one. Because uh, I'm assuming the last one before we moved on was the right one. And in this case, I just don't like the green Band-Aid being under his arm, so I'm just going to let that one go. Yeah, because I switched over to the pink Band-Aid. Okay, so great, we marked that one as a pick. And overexposed, could I fix it? Sure, but I already shot some that were properly exposed. And again, I didn't like the syringe pointing away from us, so I like these better. And okay, that was the last one, so that's going to be the shot. Didn't like the teddy, didn't like the, all the stuff in the teddy bear's lap, didn't like the label sticking out from the bottom of the teddy bear, so none of those. And this one's okay. But, actually, I do like that one better where it's sticking out more. Nope, that one I like better. So I'm just going through, hitting the letter P on the ones I'm going to submit. So P, that's a good one, P. I think I like that one better, P. I like that one better, P. I like that one better. And these are out of focus. So my focus point was off on these. No, there's no fixing that. If it's out of, if you can't read that label, that label's blurred out, you need to take another shot because the, you're, you're, they're not going to be accepted, first of all. And even if they're accepted, no one's going to buy them because they're way off focus. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to tethering because that, that was our last series anyway. Go back to tethering. No sense trying to say, oh, I'll fix that in camera. I'll use some filter. I'll try and sharpen it up. It's easier just to reshoot it the right way. <laughs> All right, <coughs> so now uh, we'll focus it this time on the, on the vial. It was still focused in the middle of the air. <coughs> so now if we look at it, that's nicely in focus. All right, and that becomes our shot. So let's mark that as a pick. Now we can get out of... Um, <coughs> we can get out of um, the tethering once again, and then we can go into attributes, picks, because, oh, I turned off picks. Picks, because that's what we want. And they're all different, so there are no two that are exactly the same. We'll select all of those. And I would recommend you putting them in a, uh, so someone's asking about the reflection. That, that's actually, that 
but those are sitting on a piece of plexiglass. Another investment, I don't know, Lowe's or Home Depot, 20 bucks at best, $5, something like that for a small sheet of plexiglass. And that way you've got it forever to shoot things where you want a reflection. As opposed to having to do them in, um, you know, in Photoshop. It's just easier to shoot them naturally. Okay, so what I would do at this point if I were you is I'd create a new collection and I'm going to do it in our master class series. So let's create a new collection. And we'll call it um, Shoot for Adobe Stock. And we'll put it in the master class um, folder or collection set. All right, so now the ones we like are all together. We don't have to worry about, you know, accidentally picking the ones we don't want. These are all together now, ready to go. So the next thing um, that you, so yeah, the plexiglass tip, that's one we, I've been using for years. And again, it's literally go to your favorite hardware store and get a sheet of plexiglass for, um, I, I don't remember, but they're like under 20 bucks. And then you got it forever. Just keep it clean and you can use it forever. <coughs> okay, so now that I got all these shots in that collection, and again, these are all my picks. I don't have to worry about you know, them all be, none of them being the right ones. Now, if you scroll down in Lightroom Classic, let me twirl up some of these. There we go. Scroll, scroll down in Lightroom Classic. There is an Adobe Stock section. And if you haven't set this up, it will say Setup on the right-hand side. I've already set it up, so I've already got a collection that I use to submit to Adobe Stock. I've submitted 4,200 and some odd images via this collection over the, over the, over the last months. Um, <coughs> you can do this in Lightroom Classic. You can do it in Adobe Bridge. Bridge has the same feature. And you, can, you don't have to use an Adobe product. So again, if you just say, hey, I shot this with my iPhone and I want to upload it, you can go to the web browser, export a JPEG out first, go to the web browser, go to contributor.stock.adobe.com and upload it. So you, you don't have to use Lightroom, you don't have to use Bridge, but they make it so much easier. All right, so I'm going to select all of these and drag them in to that collection. Oh, wait, <laughs> I didn't really want to upload them all because I didn't want to take the time to do it. All right, let's just upload a few. I'm just going to upload like that one. I'm going to get rid of all the piggy ones because I've already done piggy. And Okay, that shouldn't take too long. Let's go ahead and publish it. So when you hit publish, even though I shot these in RAW, um, and by the way, <laughs> one thing I did not do, you would go in and do all your, your corrections, which I did not do. You would edit them first. Yes, that's <laughs> John saying. Yeah, I hope you edit them first. Yeah, you would go in and edit them first. I jumped the gun and hit, su hit uh, publish. But yeah, you'd adjust the exposure, remove any distractions, fix any little things, um, and, and away you go. So now it's converting those RAWs into the high, high quality JPEGs and it's uploading them on the fly to Adobe Stock. Yep, yeah, Nic yeah, Nicholas, I skipped the adjustment part. You would absolutely do adjustments. And Photoshop if you needed to. So you would absolutely do that first, but I only got like 10 minutes left, so I didn't want to get into a bunch of adjustments. We'll adjust one just to show you what it would look like. All right, so now it's telling me to go to Adobe Stock to start selling. I'm going to get out of that for a second because people brought up a very valid point. I would have adjusted these first. I always do. So like in this shot, the white balance looks a little off down here, so I'd grab the develop module. I would click down here to get the white balance just right. I would maybe do not an auto tone because auto tone is going to be confused by the, um, by the high key. Uh, I would bump up the texture. I would definitely do um, do um, 
uh, sharpening, even more sharpening than you get from raw. So let's go to detail. And also, here's another thing you might do, and we'll do one and, and submit that one too. Uh, let's make a virtual copy. I don't know if it's going to let me make a virtual copy. Yep, it did. Okay, so let's make a virtual copy. This one is going to still be needed to be submitted. This might be an opportunity where you really crop down tight on one as well. So like if you think it would sell better if it was didn't have all that empty space or, or white space around it, then that's your opportunity to create a virtual copy and make a version of it that's tightly cropped because maybe someone wants this image where it's um, where it's it's more focused on the subject. All right, so let's uh, <laughs> two-hour masterclass. Okay, let's uh, upload that one. So I'll hit publish. It'll now upload that version. That should only take a second. Oh, I cropped it too small. So here's the thing. It, it has to be a certain resolution to be able to upload to Adobe Stock. So let's, uh, let's give it a more copy space this way. Now let's try it again. There's not enough, in other words, by cropping down, you're also reducing the resolution. And if it's not enough resolution, like you've cropped it so small, then Adobe Stock won't accept it. And that's what I had done. Okay, so now, um, now that's also another argument for like, I have a D850 that's 48 megapixels, so maybe I would shoot those that I really want to tight super crop on because I would still end up with enough resolution. All right, I'm going to go to my browser now. I'll bring my browser down in a minute. Contributor.stock.adobe.com. And there they are. I'm going to my uploaded files. And here we go. All right, let's bring this down. Okay, so now you have to do the metadata portion before you can actually submit them. So once you upload them, however you upload them, Lightroom Classic, Bridge, Web Browser, whatever, at this point, yes, they're full dimension JPEGs, at this point, it's now waiting for you to put in the keywords, put in the title. Does it contain a recognizable face or a, pers or a person that you need a mo or, or property that you need a model or property release for? So in my case, none, none of that's like, I don't need model releases for any of this. I don't need property releases because there's no branding on this. Uh, but anyway, uh, you would like answer your question. So um, is this an illustrative editorial content? No, that would be a brand. It's not. Uh, is there a recognizable person or, or, or um, property? No, there isn't. Give it a title. Um, COVID-19 vaccine with syringe and empty vial. All right. Now, you notice that Adobe Sensei has already looked at your image and added keywords that it thought were a part of that image. You don't have to use these. You can use these and more. You can rearrange these because your top five are the most important. So in this case, I would add a couple, COVID-19, and I would shoot that one up to the top because that's what this is all about. Um, You'll see if vaccine's not already here, I'll add it. Vaccination's here. Okay, so vaccine's not already there. I'll shoot vaccine up to the top, but it's really my second keyword. All right, syringe will probably be my third keyword. And because this is isolated, sometimes people search for things that are in the category of isolated and copy space, because there's plenty of copy space for people to um, use this image to add whatever text or other images they want. Also, if you see a keyword that has nothing to do with your shot, you're better off removing it, because if somebody searched for money and this came up, and they never buy it because they keep searching for money and this keeps coming up, 
then your image is actually going to be ranked down. So get rid of irrelevant keywords that Adobe Sensei put in and don't put in any irrelevant, key, irrelevant keywords because you're just hurting yourself as opposed to helping yourself. Like tablet, there's no tablet here. Get rid of that keyword. Pharmacy, I could see. Illness, there's no thermometer here. Get rid of that. Healthcare, bottle, needle, drug, injection. There's no pill. Get rid of that one. All right. Now, if you were done, you could hit submit and submit that one photo. But let's go on to the next one. Let's just jump over to this teddy bear one. Because again, I'm not going to do them all. I only got three minutes left. And no, there's no recognizable face. Um, teddy bear getting, did I spell Teddy wrong? Yes, I did. Teddy bear, is that one word? Yep, Teddy bear, COVID-19, vaccination with mask. Okay, so now, same kind of thing. These are the keywords it gave me by default. There's no, well, I can see child being there. Uh, cute, animal, soft, childhood, yep, stuff, teddy bear, blah, blah, blah. But none of this has anything to do with the vaccine. And by the way, the one thing I always forget is COVID-19, COVID, and the one I always forget is coronavirus. All right, I always forget that one. All right, um, vaccine, mask. Okay, so now I'm gonna shoot some of those up to the top because some of those should be in my top five. Like mask and vaccine. Okay, so Teddy with a mask getting the COVID-19 vaccine bear. Okay, so we'll leave that the way it is. So now I got two files ready to submit. And again, I'm not gonna do any more because they need some retouching. So I'll just delete those and, and upload the rest later. But we got one minute, 27 seconds left. So let's go ahead and submit those. And now it's ready to go and submit. So now, those two images got added to my in review. So these are other images that I've already shot that are ready to, that are just waiting to be reviewed. Half of the ones I uploaded have already been approved. It takes Adobe Stock anywhere from 24 hours to seven days to approve. It just depends on their workload. Once they're approved, then they will show up in all the searches. They will show up in the what's new. They'll show up in the, um, they'll show up in everything you need to do your, uh, for people to find them so that you can do your sales. So people ask all the time, is this worth it? And so just to give you an idea for the people that said, hey, I don't have a lot of money. Um, my lifetime earnings have bought all my new gear. So. $9,600 worth of earnings over the time I've been selling on Adobe stock. So to me, I don't know about you, that's worth it. So again, I'm out of time, but I want to thank you guys for being here and watching. Hope you got something out of this and hope you go contribute things to Adobe stock. And again, Adobe stock is not a get rich quick. It's a long game. You're constantly uploading images. You're not just uploading some today and you're done. No, because you know whatever you upload today, 50, 10, 100 images, if those don't sell, you're going to give up. So if that's what you need, then you need to not do this. <laughs> All right, so with that said, cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching.